thanks for joining me in day two of Praying the Bible. Today we're going to look at Psalm 37. I believe the Psalms are the best place in Scripture from which to pray Scripture. The reason I believe that has to do with the original purpose of the Psalms. God has inspired all the Bible and all of it equally, but the Psalms were inspired for a unique purpose, unlike any other book in the Bible. The Psalms were the song book of Israel. God inspired the Psalms as songs to be sung back to God. So the Psalms are from God, but not like any other book of the Bible, to be reflected to God. For that reason, I think the Psalms are the best place in Scripture to talk to God from the Scripture. Someone has said that the Psalms are like a little Bible, that every doctrine in the Bible is in the Psalms, either in the bud or in the flower, but they're all there. Someone else has said there's a Psalm for every sigh of the soul. So no matter what you're going through today, there is a Psalm that somewhere reflects the root emotion of what you're going through. With 150 Psalms, the entire range of human emotions is to be found there. If you will quickly scan five Psalms, it's uncanny how one of those five Psalms, you'll discover in 30 seconds, look at those five Psalms for 30 seconds, one of them will seem to put into expression what's looking for expression in your heart. For today's example, I've chosen the 37th Psalm. So let me show you what praying the Bible would look like or might look like from Psalm 37. Verse 1 reads, Fret not yourself because of evildoers. What might come to my mind is evildoers perhaps on a worldwide scale. Terrorists, for example, persecution of Christians, and the fear that that might cast in my heart are on the hearts of people in those places, and I might pray for them, pray for their courage despite the attacks of evildoers, or perhaps in my own workplace or some other setting, there may be evildoers who uh, have threatened my job or have made some other threats, and so this would cause me to look to Christ to find strength in Him. Then when I've said all that comes to mind there, I'd go to the next line, be not envious of wrongdoers. Maybe I've seen some sports figure who just signed an unbelievable contract for millions and tens of millions of dollars, and I become envious of someone like that or envious of someone who clearly rejects God and the things of God, but who seems to prosper in this world. And it's easy for me to look at them and, and be envious, even though their end is not where I want to be. And I confess my envy to God and deal with this, this subject. And then... I go to the next line, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. And I just confirm before God, Lord, I do believe this is true. I've been short-sighted. Forgive me for seeing things so, uh, so short-sightedly. Then quickly, I might go to the next verse, which says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Lord, I might pray, help me to trust in you in all these circumstances, despite what's happening. I want to trust in you and help me to do good, to befriend faithfulness, to stay faithful to you and to do as the next verse says, delight myself in you. Lord, I want to find my greatest delight in you. Use your word today toward that end. You take it from here. Why don't you take another five or seven minutes, continue praying through Psalm 37 as an example of praying the Bible.